Good morning, everybody. I'm Richard Simons. So over the last few hours uh, since yesterday, there's been much debate and much rift starting to ripple in the EV community because Tesla has started trials opening up their fantastic supercharger network to not just Teslas, but to all EVs. So as you can imagine, lots of discussions, lots of topics. And this is what we're gonna talk about in this video. There are negatives, there's positives, there's problems to resolve, and there's much opinion. So stay tuned and we'll have a little chat about it and I'll share some of my thoughts on the topic. So one of the keys to Tesla's success, I think, is their supercharger network. Right from the outset, they've been building loads of them with lots of stores, very quick, and very easy to use. That's been one of the key selling points. Um, but there's now thousands of them all around Europe and it makes traveling extremely easy. And I've been driving a Tesla myself since 2015 and lots and lots more have been added since then. Not only Teslas have been able to use the superchargers, although we have seen other people try on many occasions, but only Teslas have been able to use the Tesla supercharger network, but other uh, manufacturers have not. Tesla can use all the other ones as well, but only Teslas can use Tesla superchargers for the rapid charging on longer journeys. But that is what is about to change. Elon Musk has always said that he does want to open up the supercharging network. And we've now got to the point where yesterday the trials have started. So what does this mean? Well, what's been happening so far? What do we know? It's slightly limited, but um, as of yesterday, some trials began in the Netherlands at 10 supercharger sites. And already we've now got a few videos appear on YouTube where people have been turning up at the sites and successfully charging their non-Tesla cars. We've seen a Taycan charging, we've seen a Hyundai Ioniq charging as well. And the way that's working at the moment, it looks like you need to basically have the Tesla app and you log into that and you can select that I'm going to charge a non-Tesla. You click on that uh, button on the app, then you choose which stall you're at and it starts charging. So I presume you register a card on that account and it charges your card much like it does with a Tesla. Um, so fairly simple, straightforward and easy. With Tesla you turn up and just plug it in, it would do all that automatically, but you use an app to select it and then it starts charging. And it seemed to work for the people that have tried it so far. Interestingly, you know, how's this gonna be charged? What's, how does this charging structure work on this? Well, again, limited knowledge so far really, but it seems that you can pay a going rate or if you pay 13 euros a month on a subscription basis, you pay the same rate as a Tesla owner would pay for their supercharging. Some Tesla owners have some free supercharging. Again, one of the perks of being one of the early adopters or with one of the earlier cars, but let's assume you pay for charging. If someone pays 13 euros a month, you get the same price, which there's no point in me talking about prices too much, they vary, but I think this example in the, in the Netherlands, it was 28 cents a kilowatt hour. In the UK, most sites are between 30 and kind of 39 pence per kilowatt hour, I think. Anyway, I'm not going to get into prices too much, but it does seem that if you pay a subscription of a really quite a low amount, 13 euros, not much at all, you then get the same rate. So it seems quite promising. And you can imagine now what's happening is the Tesla owners are saying, well, hang on a minute, this is no good. I've got a Tesla because I want to charge there. And all the other EV drivers are going, well, this is brilliant. You know, I can charge there. And actually, it's not even that expensive. So there are uh, these rifts rippling now. And uh, we don't know too much. So I guess we need to sit back and take into consideration that Tesla have probably thought about this. They probably do know a bigger picture. Um, but they're charging. They're working. And that's at 10 sites in the Netherlands. And I think the plan is that is a trial. Tesla said this is a trial basis get feedback and then see how that's gonna roll out. So I'm gonna roll and talk about what some of the problems are with this and then what my opinions are, maybe some solutions to it as well. So yes, as you can imagine, a lot of Tesla owners are rather disgruntled by this. What are the problems faced with this? So basically, a lot of the current Tesla owners say that they bought the Tesla because of the supercharger network. It was a selling point. It was one of the key features of why they chose a Tesla. And I think that's true. And I've always said, although there's some other good EVs out there now, Tesla make it really easy to travel long distances in an electric car. It's very simple. They sorted it. It's perfect. It's been working for years. I've been driving electric cars since 2015, remember? So it's been working for years. But there are a number of problems. And one of them has got to be your disgruntled Tesla owner. Um, and part of that will come from, you know, ultimately the fears that the Tesla sites are going to be congested. We're already seeing that they're filling up, although Tesla are adding lots of sites all the time. We get lots of new cars being delivered and we're seeing already that some sites are becoming quite full. I've never had to queue myself yet, but I have seen now sites becoming, you know, where all the bays are occupied. And luckily with Tesla, they're quite fast and there's loads of them. So somebody pulls away and you go in, but 
as more and more cars are on the road, there's more cars than sites being uh, implemented. So there is that issue there. And then we have the fact that a lot of non-Teslas actually don't charge that quickly. Um, so many cars are still kind of 50 kilowatt charging speeds, for example. So that's slow and that will mean they're going to be parked there for longer, which means the Tesla owner that turns up can't get into a bay potentially. You know, so although some cars do charge faster than Tesla's even now, many don't, that could be an issue. But one of the biggest issues is simply the layout. Um, in terms of Tesla supercharger designs so that you reverse in with a Tesla and you have a charge port on the left-hand side at the rear, Sorry, nearly all Tesla supercharger sites, certainly UK are like this. And you, you have quite a short cable that plugs into the car. Other cars have their charge ports in different locations. Rear right, front left, front middle, front right, sides. So what we've seen already is people trying this or doing the trials or even just trying it now in the UK, turn up to sites. And because the charge port on a BMW i3 is on the rear right, they have to park on the left-hand bay and use the right-hand charger, which means they're actually taking up two charging spots. Or Porsche Taycan will have to go in and squeeze again, bring it round, will have to take in the wrong side. They just don't fit other cars. The current supercharger sites are designed for Teslas, where, at least in the UK, all the ports on the rear left-hand side of the vehicle and the short cable plugs into that. So we've got pictures already, and we'll try and overlay some now, of people stretching cables around, twisting cables, taking up two bays and that's probably one of the main issues with this um, uh, whole process so there needs to be certainly some thought about how that's going to work different cables different layouts we don't know and then we've also got the fact that with this sheer uh, opening up of the network does it take away sales from tesla you know um, a lot of people buy this tesla because it's their benefit of having a supercharged network but now does it mean tesla sales could fall does it detract from the benefits of tesla ownership are you in a position where you're thinking well i'm going to buy a tesla because the network oh well, hang on a minute now i'm going to buy something else because then i can use the charger network and there's other cars better um well i think this is a, an impact that will come through i think this could affect tesla sales i think they still see strong sales because i think overall you do have to take into consideration all the other aspects of the tesla and you could argue they're one of the most advanced evs out there they've been in it for longer than anyone else really um and they are still really really good cars and in most ways a better ev than most of the other cars but we all need different cars. We all have different you know, requirements of a car. So will this detract from a Tesla sales? Is that a negative point? Well, I think it is. I think it's something that needs to be considered. Again, I'm sure Tesla thought about it, but yeah, it's an impact, isn't it? So let me know in the comments below if you were about to buy a Tesla or if you currently have a Tesla and you would have replaced it with a Tesla or bought a Tesla, but now you're not going to. You're going to buy something else instead if you can use the supercharger networks. It'd be interesting to see just how many people have that opinion. But are there any positives to this? You know, um, are all Tesla owners negative about this? Well, I don't think so. There's a lot of concern about where it's going, but the Tesla's mission statement has always been to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy and sustainable transportation solutions, basically. So, you know, that has always been their mission statement and it is at the core of, of where the, the whole thing is going. It is about the wider picture. It is about the bigger picture of EV adoption. So although, you know, this is now starting to bring out kind of the, um, I don't want to say selfish element of people, you know, I mean it's in the right context, so anyone who's disgruntled by it, don't, don't, you know, I do mean it's in the right context, but, you know, we're now starting to get possessive about it. As a tester owner, you're getting possessive about it, but it has, it is all about the bigger picture and trying to get everybody into EVs. And one of the key points to getting into EVs is to be able to rapid charge quickly and easily. And although we're seeing a rapid growth now in the independent charging networks, and I've been running some non-testers, I still have tested but non-testers as well, and they are improving, they are getting really good. You can travel around in a Porsche Taycan in the UK very easily now, and in fact, through Europe. So, we are seeing that, and if Tesla open these up to all EVs, that does make it easier for a lot of people. There will be a charger on that route, which now you could use as a non-Tesla driver, which would answer the solution. So it is about the bigger picture, and we have to take in context that whole mission statement of Tesla. And what we want to do is, as an EV owner myself as well, we do want to get other people into EVs. That's what I spend my days doing. I think, you know, that is the bigger picture we need to focus on. So if this is going to work, and it's going to go that way, so let's try and focus on how we can make this work. So here are my opinions. These are just my opinions. I don't know what Tesla are going to do. These are my opinions only. So, you know, 
make of it as you will. Again, really interested to hear your comments below and what you think some good solutions to this all are. So what do I think? Well, I think firstly, maybe at a big multi-bay site, there should only be a limited number of bays which are open to all EVs. And they should be really clearly signed accordingly as well. So you've got a 12 bay site, maybe eight of them are tester only, or even 10 of them are tester only, and two or four, a proportion like that are open to other EVs as well. So therefore you still have a dominant Tesla only factor to them. And I think we're gonna need a different structure to the actual stalls themselves, with certainly longer cables, so that you can plug not just a Tesla on the rear right, but the other cars here, or the other cars that plug in on the side there, or they can drive in forward. So certainly a different stall layout for any stalls which are open to the non-Teslas. No hybrid cars. So again, at the moment, you could plug a Tesla Type 2 supercharger into this VW Golf GTE and it fits in and it would look like it would charge. So I'm worried that owners will just plug in their car, walk away and it will sit there not charging for half an hour, an hour or even longer. Or we are seeing some plug-in hybrids now with CCS connections as well. And again, we do see now already those cars going to rapid chargers and plugging in and they just can't rapid charge. They only charge slowly. So what's the point? So education and clear signage and awareness that no plug-in hybrid should charge there. And then pricing. I think if you're charging a non-Tesla, it should pay more money. And I think though that the moment there's this 13 euro subscription, you pay the same, a little bit more if you don't. Well, I don't think that's enough. I think it needs to be more expensive. And maybe it's non-subscription only. You know, I think it should be non-subscription and you pay a higher price for it. You know, and that's a bit like Ionity have done. So a lot of people give an Ionity criticism for saying that they charge 69 pence per kilowatt hour, which is expensive, it really is. However, with a lot of cars, my cameraman's just sneezing, did that move? <laughs> However, a lot of cars, including this car, myself, with this Porsche Taycan, when I charge it on T, I only pay 30 pence per kilowatt hour. And that's actually cheaper than some of the Tesla superchargers. So, you know, um, I think the key is that they should be available in limited numbers and you might have to pay a slightly higher price for that. But at least you've got the option. If, at least if you needed that charge, you know, that car can charge there. And I don't think there's many Tesla owners that would be standing there and see another car pull in only to see that they can't charge and are literally stuck there without anywhere to go. I don't think anyone is of that nature really. So you do want to see people charge, but if they have to pay a slightly higher price for it, then I think that's reasonable and fair. And it stops the chargers being congested unnecessarily. You know, you, these chargers already, you need to make sure people People are only using them if they need to, not just sat there whilst they're shopping for an hour and all that kind of thing. So usable, but pay a higher price. A bit like Ionity, I think. So if you have a Porsche or even a Hyundai and I think VW as well, you get your cheaper Ionity prices. But to anybody else, well, look, a Tesla can use one of them. They just have to pay the higher price for it. Fair enough, if you need it, you need it. Um, gets you out of a circumstance potentially, it might be more convenient. So something along those lines, it should be a higher price uh, per kilowatt hour. So there we are. What I don't want to see is risk between Tesla owners and non-Tesla owners. It is about the bigger picture, but I think we just need to focus on how it can work. You know, I think there is a way to make it work. As like I say, I'm sure Tesla has thought about this, but it does need to be rolled out carefully. I'm sure it will take time. It's not going to happen overnight, I don't think, when they just open everything up. So um, it will be interesting to see what happens and more will follow in due course. Uh, of, of course, you know, it will, it will develop and I'm sure they get the feedback from these trials. But it's a really interesting development. It's a big stage in EV adoption and that's one of the key things to remember. So those are just my thoughts, my opinions, but do comment below with your thoughts and again, be constructive with that. So I want to know what things you think would make it work well. Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you a tester owner, a non-tester owner? And for each of those sort of parties, what do you think of it and how it will work? You know, what we don't want to do is just opens up to everybody. Uh, somebody pulls in a Porsche Taycan and all the Tesla owners are spitting at them you know that's really what we don't want to see happening so we just need to be constructive in how it will work and feed that back to tesla hopefully so all your opinions greatly received below and um click the video like button if you thought this was interesting and um don't forget to follow us on all the social media platforms as well but i'll be really interested to read all your comments and see what you think of this but for me that's it for now thank you very much for watching